Hello and welcome to this Power Query tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're looking at Power Query text functions um, and a few of these that I found really helpful um, and a sort of real world case study. And we're going to look at the functions we can use to clean um, inconsistent casing within our data, uh, to get substrings, to create customer codes, to find out the length of text strings uh, for, let's say, if we want to see how much space we need to dedicate in a database or for visualization purposes and generating um, a globally unique identifier as a customer ID um, and some other tips as well uh, to show the SQL equivalents in one of the cases um, and also adjusting uh, data types in the Power Query Advanced Editor so that we don't necessarily need to um, add extra applied steps. So in this first example in the company name, we have a lot of inconsistencies. You can see on line five, um, we have fast chips labs and that's formatted correctly with a capitalization at each um, word. However, in line six and seven, that's inconsistent um, and the same in line one. So by using text.proper, uh, we can actually just correct that straight away. And this is going to help with standardization of unclean data. It's also going to help um, assist some of our future steps. So we can go ahead and rename that applied step. Now you'll notice that this comes through as a mixed type. We've got the whole number um, and we've got the text. Well, you could just um, apply an additional step and change it to a text data type. But as I said, it adds a bit of mess. It's a little more unclear in our applied steps. So we can actually add an additional argument in the advanced editor with a column and just say text.type and that will convert it to text without adding additional applied steps. So in this next custom column, let's say we have a requirement for a company code um, and we don't have resources uh, to get this anywhere else well we can we can do this in power query um so yeah let's say we want to take the first three um text characters and we want to append that with a hyphen um, and join that to the region um, in the old company name uh, on line six digital would have been formatted differently because the first um, word wasn't capitalized so that's why standardizing things can help later on so to get a substring we can say text.range and we want to get those first um, three characters starting at position zero at the first letter that we have available on the left that's just the index now that would give us, so in line one, TES, let's say we can use the ampersand and a hyphen um, to show that we're going to join on that hyphen to, let's say, TES on line one, and another ampersand to join on the full region column or the output of that region column. And there we go, we have TES East because the corresponding region is East. And that's a handy way to generate a company code that we may use um, down the line in visualization or other systems or as an identifier. And again, we can change the data type within the advanced editor and rename any applied steps that's easier for us to keep track later on. Now, let's say the company has asked or a stakeholder and the company has asked to get the length of um, one of the, the company names, one of our customer names. So we can actually just use text.length and we want to take that proper company name um, just for standardization sake so that the, the formatting's there. And we can now figure out the length um, or the number of characters in a company name. And again, we won't convert that to text this time. We'll use an integer, a whole number. So we can use int64.type. And this could be for several reasons. Um, maybe they want to view, you know, if you had more data than this, this is just a sample, obviously the size of company names uh, for database uh, presentation or storage or for visualization. There could be several reasons, but this is very handy. And it also pretty much has the same functionality as SQL len the length function as i'll show so essentially the same functionality as the power query um, text.length we just select provide an alias company name length is equal to 
len, the length function of test labs, and we get um, nine character length, which is the same, obviously, uh, as the text.length function. As I said, we could just uh, rename that in the applied steps, provide a description if we want. Let's say it's for developing data warehouses and visualization, just for sort of allocating width or space. So that's that step done. And the last one that we can do um, is we could provide a GUID, a globally unique identifier, just as a customer ID. And again, this is similar to the new ID function in SQL Server. So we can just say text, uh, dot new GUID, provide the parenthesis, and that will provide a customer ID, again, if we don't have the resources to, to use one. And we can provide a, a text type there in the advanced editor, streamliner steps, and again, uh, rename that applied steps. And there we go. We've gone from having just a, an, a really unclean company name and region to um, getting some really powerful steps and functionality and features off those two columns alone. As usual, if you like this content, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you.